Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. I've got something a little bit unusual on the bench today. I've got this control unit, which is for a Yamaha disc clavier, which is basically like, you remember the old um, roller piano rolls, the pianolas? So this is like a modern day pianola. So the piano is out in the living room. And this is the control unit. Um, you put floppy disks in it, so it's not super new, obviously. 1992 this was made. Um, anyway, this is working. However, it also has a remote control and the batteries have done their usual trick of leaking. So I'm going to need to clean that up. And also, if I have a look at the remote control as well, you can see how absolutely disgustingly scungy that key mat is. So I'll give that a clean up. The PCB looks fairly clean, possibly maybe a little bit of battery acid down here. So I'll just give that a clean up. But um, yeah, hopefully when I clean this up, the remote control will work as well. I'm also going to open up the control unit just to have a look inside it, just to see what sort of condition it's in. Um, it doesn't look like it has any air vents, so it shouldn't be full of dust. But yeah, I'll have a look at that too and see what state that's in. But yeah, first trick is going to be to see if I can get this remote control working. Okay, so first of all, down this end, we've got this, this shorting piece between the two batteries, and it looks like it's in pretty good shape, actually. Uh, it doesn't look like it's actually corroded itself, so that will just need a bit of a cleanup, and that'll be fine. Uh, however, yeah, the other end um, is quite, quite scungy, actually. You can see all of this sort of white powder. Um, that all needs to be dealt with, needs to be gotten rid of. Um, so you can see this contact here has got quite a bit of corrosion on it. Um, but yeah, as you can see, that's what I thought, they will come out. Yep, yeah, there we go, they'll come out. And, oh yeah, look at that, look at that humongous chunk of yak. Get rid of that. Okay, so... Yeah, so now those are out, so I'll just be able to work on these out here now. Okay, so what we need to do now is just neutralize all the alkaline goop that's come out of these batteries. So I've got some white vinegar, we'll do that. So I'm just going to apply white vinegar to this and hopefully this will really go a long way in cleaning it up. Right, so that's more or less cleaned up. This one here looks pretty good. Um, however, I really do not like the look of the solder joint. So I'm just going to um, redo the solder joint. Okay, so we got a little bit of a problem here. It's never as quite as simple as it seems. So you can see here that the solder mask has kind of like flaked away. So basically what's happened is that the battery acid wick, has wicked up the, um, the wire. So you, know, you imagine a bit of wire. You imagine the, well, it's actually alkaline because they're alkaline, alkaline batteries, but the battery goop wicks its way up inside the wire and then it gets onto the circuit board so that's why there's this um, solder mask has flaked away because it started to eat there so I've cleaned that up but also the hole that the wire was in is full of gunk so I'm going to have to clean that out um, to be able to refit this terminal Okay, so I've got this hole cleaned out, and when I dabbed some white vinegar on it, it bubbled. So that's the chemical reaction. So what it showed me was that there was still um, alkaline goop down that hole. So if I had have just kind of, you know, shoved another wire through this and resoldered it, then that stuff would have just kept on eating away. 
So it is not quite as simple as it seems to get rid of it all. But anyway, I think that hole is now dealt with. So, and the other one looks okay. There's no evidence um, of, of wicking up that hole. The joint looks good. Um, this, that's the original wire. The original wire looks okay. Um, I am going to disconnect it at this end because I'm going to have to deal with this rust, but let's get the negative terminal reattached first. So there's that negative wire replaced. I resolded in. That joint looks nice. All right, so I've got that terminal off. That red wire looks okay to me. There's no evidence of it wicking up there. So, um, yeah, this terminal, I need to stabilize this rust. So I'm just going to drop it into some evapor rust and leave that for a while and see what it comes out like. But as long as I stabilize the rust, it'll be fine. Um, there's still plenty of nice shiny metal there for the battery to make contact with. And the spot for me to solder the wire back on is okay, so just as long as it doesn't get any worse, that will be fine. Okay, so this is all cleaned up now. Key mats all cleaned up. And battery terminals cleaned up as good as they're going to get, re-terminated. Right, so that's the battery terminals reinstalled into there. So now we've just got to get the case reassembled. Now, yeah, how does this work? Okay, that must go in there. Like so. Uh -huh. Some batteries. Right, one remote. Let's see if it works. Okay, let's see now whether this remote control will work. Look at that it seems to be working now so yeah this looks pretty awful before being cleaned up but that does seem to be working now so now I'm just going to pull the lid off this um, control unit and just see what it looks like inside right let's see what's in here down from the top little clippy things anyway we'll sort that out in a minute okay so yeah so this is 1992 vintage that this was made 
Um, okay, cool. So I'll just turn it around because the writing's up the other way. But yeah, it's got a, a Zilog Z80 processor. Let's make sure I'm hanging on to my static strap before I touch anything. Yeah, a Zilog Z80 um, processor, which is kind of cool. Um, 62256, that'll be some memory. Um, 63265, I can't remember what that is offhand. Bunch of 74 logic, which is kind of not too surprising. There's a ROM, looks like a UV erasable ROM. So, yeah, the kind of stuff that you would expect to find, I think, um, in a something of this vintage. There is a 7, 8 something or other linear reg. I just can't read what voltage it is, but who cares. Um, some nice ferrite, ferrites around the cables. That's for your interface cables going outside. So, um, contrary to popular belief, EMC was not invented in the year 2000. Um, and of course, the, the floppy drive. So, um, yeah, not anything too unexpected, but what I am pleased about is I was a little bit worried that there might be a battery in here. Uh, I couldn't think of any reason for there to be one, but no, there is no battery in here. The circuit board looks pretty clean. Um, there's no dust ventilation, so really the only hole to the outside world is the, um, yeah, you can see some dust there. That's the hole for the floppy drive. So we'll give that a bit of a clean up. Um, the drive does seem to be working okay. I do not have a cleaning disc. I did have one about 30 years ago, um, but I have not honed any floppy disks for a very, very long time. Yeah, so anyway, so that's um, the repair of the remote control for this Yamaha Disc Clavier. This is an MX95 model, by the way. I could find very, very little about it onto the internet. 1992, this was purchased new by its previous owner. Um, quite interesting to have a look inside the control. You know, I remember when these things came out. I think I first saw one of these in about 1990 and just remembered thinking how absolutely amazing they were. Uh, and I still think they're amazing. And, um, you know, you don't need to worry about them not well, not having floppies. I mean, this one's got heaps of floppies with it and it's working. But it's got MIDI in, so you can just connect it to a laptop and you can do everything through a laptop, so you don't need to worry about floppies. So they're, a, yeah, a really cool little device. Thanks so much for watching my video. I'm really glad you came along. Do check out my other channel, Watch Out, it's cool. There'll be a link in the comments. Speaking of comments, leave yours on this video, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye for now.